we're going to be making some scalloped edge templates. These are um, rather easy to make in Photoshop Elements if you are making them in a, a straight line as this one here. Uh, but if um, you're making them in a curved shape, uh, you cannot throw them on a path like you can in Photoshop, the full version, and that is a little bit more difficult, but there's still a lot of things you can do to play with in Photoshop Elements, and I'm going to show you now how to do that. Um, first, I'm going to make a new layer. I'm going to go down to my brush tool, and let's go up and choose a hard round brush. Now use the bracket keys, as we've done in the other tutorials, to change the size of your brush. Obviously the curve you're looking at at the top of this circle is going to determine how uh, wide your bump uh, in the scallop is going to be. I've already made some larger ones. Um, to give out, and so I'm going to do this particular one in a smaller size, uh, so I have another freebie to make. Um, then let's go to the brush options and change the spacing. Now as we change the spacing, you can watch the thumbnail up here, and it's going to change, and we want it to be about like this so that uh, the bumps touch each other. Um, make sure your ha hardness is at 100% when you're using brushes uh, to do this because um, that's preferable uh, to have that hard edge on your template. Then I'm going to simply hold down my shift key to keep this line straight and draw across the page. Now I'm going to stop short of putting this last one um, outside of the, uh, the the file, the paper. Next, grab your rectangular marquee tool and draw a selection across there. And now this is where it might be best to zoom in because I'm just eyeing this from a distance. And you can grab your paint bucket or you can just hit Alt Backspace and it will fill it with your uh, foreground color. Control D to deselect. And now you can see up here I didn't do such a great job. So I'm going to go ahead and make another selection and fill it in. And I purposefully made it too big because this um, can be a little bit frustrating to get it accurate and I wanted to show you that if you do just do it a little bit over you can make another selection and hit the delete key on the keyboard to get that edge nice and straight and now I want this template to go from edge to edge and so I'm simply going to grab it and pull it out and now I have my template uh, that you can cut any paper with. Um, you know, if remember you can uh, make it shorter. If you don't want your template that big, you can make it shorter by deleting that off of there. Uh, let's uh, get on the right layer. Um, remember you can rotate now and flip that uh, layer vertical and now it will tuck up there at the top nicely instead of at the bottom. Or you can flip it so it's on the side or however you want to utilize that template when you cut your paper. Um, let me hit save. Now I want to show you some more methods. Always more than one way to do something. Here is a round template that I made and let me show you how to do that. I'm going to create a new layer. I'm going to grab that brush tool and 
hold down my shift key and go across the page resize it so it fits all the way across the page it's okay that it's a little bit oval now and then I'm going to go to filter distort polar coordinates rectangular to polo polar is my setting and I hit OK and now I have this circle I'm going to grab well I think the easiest way to do this grab your paint bucket tool make sure that contiguous is checked so it doesn't go everywhere well hold on before we do that I see a little bit of a problem I'm going to grab my brush tool and you can see that it's not quite closed in here and so I'm going to kind of just add a little bit to close that in and now I'm going to grab my paint bucket tool and you'll notice it leaves that uh, little white area and so we just hit it again and there I have a scalloped circle mat okay down here let's uh, let's turn that off let's show you some more things that you can do um, okay here's one that I made that is um, kind of uh, wavy so I'm going to show you how I did that let's grab that circle brush again oh create a new layer make that line all the way across again I got really small scallops now that's okay uh, because I'm going to give these away as free templates and I wanted a variety of sizes. Getting this uh, edge over here is a little tricky at times. And so now I'm going to resize that out and this time I'm going to go to the filter distort and I'm going to choose wave now this is where it gets a little trick tricky you do want um, your number of waves to be at one and here I have my wavelength pretty far over um, maybe I want to do this one a little bit different than the last one and have three bumps instead of two there and now the amplitude is how far up and down this wave goes so if I want to make it not go so high I can bring that down and um, you can play with the scale if you want see what happens if you bring it all the way down it's going to be straight and so play with that scale you just this is a a lot of playing um, to get it the way you want it and so uh, you just look at this small preview use wrap around and click OK and now I'm going to grab my rectangular marquee tool and just cut off this bottom part and now I have a, a new template but what I don't like about doing this which it's okay but you can see how it's kind of angled the scallops and that's an okay look but um, let's look at the next one this is one done by a freehand curve and so to do that it's the same as all the other techniques. I've grabbed my brush tool. I'm going to make it just one a tab uh, larger. And then I have uh, simply freehand drawn a curve. Now I'm going to go back and 
whoops, let's not make it that high, make this rectangular shape as we have been doing, but now I have this space in here, and that's not really as difficult as it seems to fill in. Remember, contiguous, use your paint bucket tool, and uh, just click, whoops, let's um, go ahead and stretch that out to the edge. Get our paint bucket tool and just fill in all of these areas. Zoom in to get them. Actually for these it might be just easier for me to draw a selection. And now I don't like this the way it's up here at the top so I can actually make that um, come right off my screen until it looks a little bit more pleasing to the eye. There, now I have another uh, wavy border. But this time you'll see that the um, when you do it freehand, that these bumps do not get slanted. Okay, let's move on. Aha! Here's another one, and I'm not going to make this uh, another whole another full uh, example, but I'm going to show you how I did it. I'm going to create a new layer. I'm going to go to the brushes, and what I want you to do is uh, to look at your brushes uh, with some creativity and imagination. And I went down to the calligraphy brushes, and um, I found this oval one. Um, I enlarged it, and now you can see this is going to make a very subtle scallop. Uh, have to go out and and space it of course. This one has to come pretty far over. I remember this one being a little bit difficult to get just right, but then um, you can make your scalloped edges that way. And that's what I did with this one. Um, here's the uh, next one I did and it's a whole nother look, but I used this vertical oval for it. And let's space those out just to show you. I'm not going to go recreate the whole thing, but uh, make my oval larger and draw across. And now you can see that that's going to make the really um, deep curves as uh, I, I did with this template. And so that's pretty cool. Now I want you to see that you can continue to use your imagination. Here is one that I made with a heart shape. So now we're going to go into the custom shape tools. And if we go down to uh, shapes, and here's a heart, and I want to show you a whole uh, new method of making it. Remember I, I say there's always more than one way to do things. Now for this, um, use your imagination. You can either hold down your shift key to uh, draw a perfect heart or um, you can not hold it down and make it more spread out. I'm going to go ahead and do the perfect heart one for now. I'm going to simplify it and let me show you one more method that you can utilize to make these. If I hold down my Alt key, I'm on my Move tool and I'm going to hold down my Alt key and then the Shift key to keep it straight and just click with my mouse and drag. It is going to drop a copy of it. Now this is a lot of eyeing rather than that perfection with the brush. Um, and I'm going to show you what you can do, uh, another option here in a minute. But I'm just simply letting up on the um, mouse and then clicking down again and dragging. And you can see that then I, I can drag that all the way across. Now what I'm going to do is hold the Shift key and the Control key and I'm on my top heart and click down to my bottom heart and you can see that in the layers palette it, it selects all of those hearts. Right 
click and let's see if I can get this to show right click and merge layers and now them they are all on one layer I'm gonna grab this so that ends correctly and then just as we did before fill that in and now I have a scalloped edge that I've made with uh, the heart crop tool but this opens up whole new worlds um, I want to uh, let's see I labeled these so that um, I would be able to show you here is another one if you go in here to those same shape tools you'll see a pre-made scalloped edge called a flower hold down your shift key draw with it and voila you have one automatically that quickly um, here is one made with the oval shape so uh, I'm gonna go back in here and down here you're going to see an oval shape and so you can uh, hold down your shift key and make this proportionate or you can uh, not hold down that shift key and make this any kind of oval you want and then as I shared before you can hold down the alt key and drag this side by side all the way across so there it is um, using the oval I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that because I don't need to make it again here is one using the spade brush or spade Um, shape here it is like a spade card and let me show you um, what you can do that for something different uh, another method I'm going to go ahead and draw this spade card shape and now I'm going to hold down my control key and click here in the layers palette to get those marching ants around there edit define brush and deselect and I can even get rid of my shape make a new layer grab my brush tool and down here at the bottom is my spade and I'm going to change the spacing I'm going to make it a little bit smaller and hold down my shift key and draw with this brush and now do the same thing we've been doing all along alt backspace and I have a whole different look if you find um, a little bit of trouble you'll see what um, happens here when I try to resize right up to the edge it either goes way over the edge or just short of the edge um, when you're uh, resizing if you hold down the control key when you grab this middle one it's not going to snap into place and you can manually center it on the edge and that's another little tip I'm gonna throw out there for you uh, let's see some more examples this one here was made with sign number 12 so I'm gonna go in here and what I did was I just went around to all the shapes and I looked for something unique and here is sign number 12 and so I chose this come on there we go and uh, drew this shape and I'm not going to recreate the whole thing but just to give you an idea and I made that across the page and I'm freezing up where did my mouse go and so here is sign 12 and it's a whole different um, shape it's got a larger and a smaller and it's also going concave rather than humping up so that's a whole nother different scalloped shape this one here is made with um, 
sign shape number two and uh, you can see it's uh, more like have triangle points uh, and here's sign shape number two and you can actually make something uh, creative with this by drawing it in different shapes and then I kinda like this so I'm gonna actually go ahead and make this one to keep I like that I um, did it uh, a little bit further apart and so I'm gonna hold down my shift and control key and grab all of these right click merge layers I'm gonna move this so it goes from edge to edge and then I'm going to grab alt backspace and I have a whole other template that I've just made with that um, sign number two and there's the original one I made because uh, I made it with holding down the shift key made from the, its original size here is one that I made using the stop sign you can see that in there and I don't think I need to make that again um, here is one I used making the raindrop shape let me see if I can find that one um, I believe that one was under nature shapes and here it is and um, I, uh, you can of course copy it as we have been doing or make a brush out of it and here is whoops there it is um, in its completed form and uh, remember you can flip that either direction I have one more last one I'm gonna show you how to create uh, and it is one with the holes in it and this is not as difficult as it looks what I'm going to do is create a new layer get my circular marquee tool I'm a um, hold down my shift key to make it a perfect circle alt backspace to fill in and I'm gonna go to select modify contract and I have a pr I'm gonna put a pretty big number in there um, this time I'm gonna do maybe 60 so uh, my templates a little bit different let's go a little bit more because I, I want to make a much smaller hole than I did before I'm gonna hit delete on my keyboard and now I have a shape hold down my control key click in the layers palette to get those marching ants edit define brush and deselect and I'm gonna create a new layer and go get that brush there it is I'm gonna make it a little bit smaller I'm gonna change the spacing on it and go ahead and hold down my shift key as we've been doing and draw that across the page then I'm as we've been doing all of the others now this one um, you know it's gonna make a little bit of a difference how far uh, down you fill it in I could have this look here um, with it filled in at that distance or if I wanted to I can use my arrow key and nudge that selection down and fill it in so there's a little bit more of that hole left uh, I actually liked it up higher for this instance it's all in uh, what you're going for and what creativity you have and I don't like the way this um, doesn't quite reach the edge and so I'm gonna hold down that control key as I said before and just kinda drag that out so that edge matches the other edge and um, this video is getting kind of long but there was so many things and ways and ideas to inspire you 
I encourage you to look through those shape tools and um, just find uh, any shape that you can utilize. Um, I was, uh, I mean here, you've got a bump on this cloud shape. Uh, well, I found some others. Uh, I'm not sure what this one here would do, uh, but all you've got to do is test it out. Just put them out there. I mean, here's a sign shape, and I have no idea what this little partial curve on this badge would look like. Or um, there's some here that might give something interesting. Um, I was going through this lemon shape might be an interesting one. So you can just uh, use your imagination when you're making these. There's all sorts of objects here. Um, I wonder what the handle on this one would make, you know, and so you just grab it and you try it out and now I'm going to just see what it looks like. And there is yet another cut out shape. Drag some over here. That's not wanting to go in place there. And I'm going to link all those little purses together. Merge layers and drag this so it reaches edge to edge. And look at that. Get in there, use your imagination, and have fun. And please do share with me what you uh, make with this because um, I really do enjoy seeing um, how people learn from these tutorials. Have a fun day.